Today, we're gonna to talk about Angular routing. And so we have some code over here. We have this index.html file, and we're gonna go ahead and open it up here to see what it actually does. And so it is a blog website. And so we have this website, it's a blog. We have different content on it. We have about me, posts, contact. And this tutorial is mainly gonna be about functionality. It's not gonna be about design or CSS, but we are gonna add the functionality so that when I click about me, it takes me to a page that has more information about me. If I click posts, it should take me to a page, you know, where there's all of my posts, all of like everything I've written for the blog should be there. And then we'll have contact. And when you click contact, it should take you again to a new page with information on how you can contact, you know, the person that's running this blog. And so that is what we're going to do today. And we can go ahead and look at the code that generates what we've created so far. And so in the head, we have the script tag, you know, just importing Angular. We have this app or module called blog. And if we go back to the app.js file, you'll see this is where we init our blog module. And then we say, you know, this whole, everything that's in this body is gonna be part of the blog module. And here is the content that we saw earlier on the web page. And then here we just import our app.js file. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add routing and routing is gonna make it so that when I'm on one page, I click something, it takes me to another page in the application. And so to import this routing thing, we have to add another script tag. Instead of angular.min.js, we're gonna write angular-route.js. And so this is just importing the routing functionality. Then we're gonna to go to our app.js file and we're gonna add quite a bit of code here. And so because our application is going to use routing, we need to add ng route as a dependency because if we do not have the functionality to allow us to route to different pages, then obviously our application won't work. And so we need to make sure we have this ng route for our application to run and be successful. And so this is kind of a double checking to make sure we have it. And we do have it because we added the script tag from before. That's gonna import this JavaScript that we need. Next, we are going to configure some routes. And so we're gonna say, you know, when I get this URL, it's going to route it to this piece of content. And we'll talk more about URLs and what it maps to later, but let's just write this code for now. And so our app is like the center of everything. And so we have, you know, our app is this module with blog. And so basically all of the routes that we configure are going to deal with anything that's in this body of code because we have ng-app here. And so let's configure these routes. And so I'm gonna write some code and then explain it in a second. Our routes are configured. And so this has a lot to do with URLs. And so here we have .config because we're doing some configurations of our application. We have this route provider and this is what you know provides the routes. And so when we say .win, we say when the URL just has a slash, there's no extra content after you know the main URL. So it's just, you know, for Google, it's only www.google.com. If it's just that, you know, one thing, then we want to go ahead and have this be loaded. And so views and then home.html within the views folder. If we have, you know, www.somewebsite.com slash about me, then we wanna go ahead and load the about me HTML. And that's gonna have different code than the home.html has because we want different content to be shown when we're on the about me page. And this is gonna be the same thing for posts. And so when we have the slash posts, then we're gonna go ahead and load that. When we have slash contact, then we're gonna to go to the contact HTML page and we're gonna have that be loaded. Say we have, you know, slash 123 as a URL. Well, it doesn't match any of these four things. So we're gonna go ahead and redirect to the home and so, or the slash. And so when it's the slash, we redirect to home. And that's how it's gonna work for this tutorial. But the problem right now is that none of these pages exists. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a views folder inside of our code folder here. And then we're gonna add all of these HTML documents. And so to do that, we'll go ahead and go back here. We'll open this code page and we're gonna create this folder views. So we have the folder, then we'll go back here and we're gonna create all of these HTML files. And so the first one was home 
index.html, and we're gonna put this in the views folder. Inside of this, we're gonna go back to our index.html, and we're gonna copy all the stuff and put it right in here. That's it, because that's all we wanna be shown on the home.html page. Then we'll create another new file. It's gonna be the aboutme.html, and in this we'll say, you know, a little header about me, and then we'll say, you know, for the about me, my name is Bob, not Bobby, but Bob. So make sure to call this person Bob, not Bobby. And that's it for our HTML for this page. And then we'll create our posts.html page. And inside of here, we'll have this title that says posts. We'll have, you know, an H3 header that says my first post. So this could be your first blog post, and then we'll say this is my first post. There we go. And then we'll create our last HTML file, and that will be contact. And so we'll do h1, contact me. So this is just the header for it. And we'll save it as contact.html, h1. And then underneath it, we'll say email, along with some other stuff. and you'd put your phone number there. We are almost done. We just have to go back to our index.html and add one line of code. We'll do div and gview slash div. And what this is gonna do is basically ngView is gonna go ahead and look at our app.js and depending on what the URL is, it will load one of these four files. And so if it's, you know, slash about me, it will load this content inside of this div. And so if we go back here, we'll refresh the page and you know, nothing is going to be shown. And that's because we need to use our server, http-server. And so if you've not done this before, it was done in the directive tutorial, but basically what you'll have to do is one, install npm because that's how you install HTTP server. So once you have npm or node, you'll go ahead and do npm install HTTP server. And this is just a node library, and so it's one of the libraries, you get it, you install it, but you'll wanna make sure that you're in this code directory, so you'll just drag this into your terminal, and you can open the terminal and do all of that. And so what you'll do is you'll do npm install HTTP here, and then you can also do dash G if you wanna have it globally, so then you never have to install it again. And so you'll do that, and then once you have HTTP server installed, you'll do HTTP server in here, and then it will be available at this link here. And so we'll go ahead and paste this in here. And there is our blog. Great, and notice this slash is just, you know, it's just the slash and so our home.html content loaded. But if we did about me, it would take me to the about me page. If we did posts, it will take me to the posts page. And if we do contact, it will take me to the contact page. But the problem that we're facing right now is that we have these views, but they're not accessible from the blog, you know, homepage. I have to know what the URL is in order to access the content, and this is bad. I wanna make it so when I click About Me, it takes me to the About Me page, and we can do that. And so we'll go ahead and go back to our home.html page, and this is where we're gonna need to edit the code. And so we have this, let's format it well. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna need to do a href, and this is creating a link. And so we're gonna do hashtag slash about me, and then we'll go ahead and close this. And so that way this text is linked and it's within a paragraph tag. And then we'll go ahead and do the same for this other content. And so we'll do the slash. Make sure this is exactly right. You need to make sure like it's slash about me, not slash about dash me, or whatever it is. It needs to match whatever URL you created in here when you did the dot when. Make sure you have this, and then just with the hashtag in front of it when you call it. You do not want to use this link instead, because if you did, you know, a href, you know, views slash about me dot html, what would that would do is it would load the static content of that you know, HTML document. And what we wanna do is we will later want to use controllers to maybe manipulate the data inside of these HTML documents. And this will become more important later, but for right now, just make sure you are using the actual link that will then be used by the config function so that it matches you know, the dot win. 
And so now if we save all of this, we'll go ahead and re-render it here. We'll have to exit this, create a new incognito window, make sure to restart your server here. It's gotta be incognito because of caching problems, but now here we are. We have this, if I click about me, it takes me to the about me. I click posts, it takes me to posts. I take contact, it takes me to contact me. This is awesome. Now there's one more thing we are gonna do before I let you go. We are gonna add a controller to all of this. And so we'll go into code. We'll go ahead and create a new folder called controllers. We'll put it in this JS folder and we are gonna create a controller that manipulates the data on one of these pages. And I'll show you what I mean in a second. And so we'll have to first create a new file that is a controller. And if you do not know what a controller is, check out the basics of AngularJS video and then all of this will make sense. And so we'll save this and we are gonna put it inside of JS, inside of controllers, and we are just going to call it the about me controller.js. And here it is, and then we're gonna write app.controller about me controller, along with all this other stuff. And so this should all look pretty familiar. So what we're doing here is, remember that app is the center of our entire universe for Angular. We had in our app.js file, we have app, we create it, this is where all of our routing is, and it's where our controllers are going to be as well. And so you could have a controller for each page, you could have you know, a home controller, you could have a post controller, but for this tutorial, we are gonna try to create the about me controller that is going to change the title of this. And so eventually you could get data from the internet and you can learn how to do that in the endpoints or the Angular services tutorial, but you could get some data somewhere and then have that be the title here. But we're just gonna use the static data so we can get a feel for it. But basically we are going to change the title of the about me page from our controller. And so we have this controller, it's created. How does it get hooked up to our about me.html file? Well, we'll have our app.js and with this, template URL, we are gonna say controller, and we are just gonna put the name of the controller, main controller, about me controller, and not .js, really important, just the name of the controller. And now that we have this controller hooked up, we'll go to the about me.html page, and instead of about me being the title, we'll go ahead and take the title from the scope. And so we created this about me controller. We have the controller, we go to our app.js. If the URL happens to be, you know, slash about me, we'll go ahead and take this view and we'll also take the controller that's handling its data. We'll go to the view, we'll see, oh, this is from the scope. What did we set the value of title in the scope? Well, we set it to about me Bob and so then here we are, that will be the title, and then we'll still keep this paragraph. And so it allows our HTML files to be a little more dynamic. So we'll go ahead and restart everything here. And before we start the server, there's one more thing we have to do. We have to import our about me controller. And so we'll go ahead and go to the index.html and we'll import this controller so that way we have access to it. And now that we have this imported, we'll go back to the app.js file and we'll double check that we have a comma here. You should have a comma between you know, the template URL, its value, and then the controller and its value. And so a comma is very important or else it will not work. So remember that comma. And then we'll go ahead and start the server and then go to this URL. There we go. We'll go ahead and go to about me and bam, there is our about me you know, bar Bob. And that's great. Our controller controlled the data. We used it in our app.js here. So we have our you know, controller, it was created. It said something about the title. We have this about me. We had you know, the view, what is it gonna be? What is the controller that's going to control the data in the view? And then in here we said, okay, go get the title from the scope, which was set in the controller, and then give me the rest of the file. And so that is it for Angular directives. If you have questions, post them down below, and I'll see you next week with a new tutorial.